What do you think about when you think about tomatoes? Pizza. Your spaghetti sauce. Stuffed tomatoes. You gotta can them. It's all about the tomatoes tonight. They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Weisenberger Mill. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Nikki's here with us. Because someone needs to clean up. Anyhow, the garden is just fantastic. It is. We plant heavy on the tomatoes. You said, please don't plant that many tomatoes. You did. But. I'm getting 50 a day. You know what? And here's the thing about tomatoes. We, you know, we just recently touched on canning. Tomatoes keep on coming. Thank goodness we've had a wonderful year for tomatoes. Those are good looking. We tomatoes. love our tomatoes. Mm -hmm. The thing about tomatoes is I was looking at a list of things that are bad for you that you buy from the store. And I don't want to get up on a soapbox and don't want to offend anybody. But when you buy tomatoes, a lot of times the lining of the can is dangerous. It's got chemicals in it that you don't want. A lot of the chemical process they use to fill the tomatoes sometimes is bad. So the very thing that should be the best in the world for you has chemicals in it. So plant 40 million tomato plants. Or 50 million. Okay. So we went heavy on the tomatoes this year. You know, last week it was about canning, canning, canning. Right. This week it's just very simple. We're going to show you how to put your tomatoes up. Do them a little differently. Instead of having a big glob, you're going to dice them and put them in there. And by the way, while we're sitting here, we talked about pizza, we talked about spaghetti. Our Weisenberger pizza dough is rising right now. And we've taken two and put in there because we like big pizza doughs. That's gonna... delicious dough. And fresh tomatoes. Basil. Yum. Oh, we'll talk about that later. All right, back to the canned tomatoes. Actually, first we're going to start with our jars. Let's get our jars. Okay. Let's now, go. have you already I have not. These yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Jars. It doesn't take very long. Now, we've already got water boiling. If you heard anything in the background, it's just that. Let's get those boiling. Just give them a couple of minutes here. Take them out. There's so many things that we use tomatoes for, and we know where they came from. That's right. From our garden. All right. That's it. Those are ready to go. The jars are sterilized. We're going to go ahead, and I think a lot of people say put them in 30 seconds. I go a little long. I wait till I see the skin start to come off, and I don't I don't cut them first. Some people do. They cut this, this part out. Mm -hmm. I wait, pull the skin off, and cut them while I'm going. It's now, all how long do you leave them in there? Just let's watch it. Some people say 30 seconds. I wait till I start to see the skin come off. Then we're going to put them in cold water, peel them, cut them, jars, salt. That's it. But you, you're leaving them a little bit firmer because I don't like them right. that mushy. You know, a, a lot of times when you can tomatoes, you just put the whole thing in. You can a big do that, blob. right? I like it the way you've been dicing them so it comes out a little more structured and not, not a big good blob. spaghetti sauce. <laughs> if you've never had spaghetti that's fresh with fresh ingredients, with a fresh basil pesto, which again, we use in a lot of recipes. If you don't want to make it, you can buy a basil pesto at the store, which got everything you need in it. But oh my, fresh spaghetti, which we're gonna have in just a little while. The other night, you, you can't beat it. You saw all my jars and you used about five to make spaghetti, didn't you? Got you all I couldn't excited. Stand it. it was good. Because we talked about the fact that instead of having a big glob, we have it now cut up right. in uniform little diced right. areas, which I really like. Okay, I think we're ready. And you can see the skin's already oh, yeah. falling off. 
Might even let them go a little too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull all these out. And I'm gonna let that water keep going because we're gonna go ahead and use that for when we put them in their jars. All right. So when you kind of see one of the skins given, you know that they're all pretty right. much in the same zone. Right, and see, I can touch them because of the cold water and see how that just comes off. See, like that. that's precious. Sometimes people get these first, but I just go ahead and cut them out. And I've only got about eight tomatoes here, so we're gonna do about two to three jars worth tonight. But usually when we're doing this, we're just going crazy. What you basically do is go get them when, when they're getting ripe and about to get ripe, let them sit till you get a good batch, bring them in, and then go to town on them. Let's go ahead and fill a jar. This is how you like them. You kind of just like them diced a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. All right, you're gonna start packing these in the jars. I'll put it right there for you. I'm just gonna get right in here. Man, there's so many wonderful recipes that we use them for. The majority of our tomatoes are going this route. All right, this is gonna be about a jar full here. We'll have to get another jar. Put about a teaspoon of salt in there. I just kind of shake it. Okay. Kind of just eyeball it a little. Yeah, that one is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put your lids on for you. Simple. Is this simple or what? There's nothing to it. Now, here's the part where we talk about the hot bath. We've already got our water over here. Obviously, there's pints and there's quarts. Right. And we are using pints. That's right. How long do you hot bath these? A pint is 35 minutes. Okay. And a quart, I go 45. So no pressure cooker no. needed for tomatoes. Why? Because tomatoes are acidic. So they repel bacteria, which we like. Now think about as you're canning tomatoes, how you like them in your recipes, what size you like them. If you do a lot of soups and you want them a little finer, you can really chop right. the fire out of them. Now one thing you want to really watch for, if you have a tomato that's got a bad spot on it, it's already starting to decompose, that can quickly mess a jar up. So if you got a bad spot on your tomato, make sure that you cut that out before you get started. A little bit of salt. And then the last jar. And we're just doing three to show you the process. And then we're gonna actually take some that we canned the other day. And I hate to do this, but we're gonna put them in a sauce. I almost, I almost like to look at them. I almost feel bad when we're using them up. Like, oh my goodness. You don't want to use them? We won't them. have those this winter. And you've got it down to a science. You know how much About, it takes. Yeah, I'm hoping this is enough. A little bit of salt. Hola. That is it. And will you time this for me? We're going to go, these are boiling. Are we boiling already? Yes, it is. What did you say, 35 minutes? 35 minutes. All right, I've got some olive oil going here, and I'm going to saute you some onions for stuffed tomatoes. Yum. Thank you. That's about a cup, so use what you think. OK. These. Tomatoes are wonderful. You grew in the garden. I don't know what they are, but they are perfect. So you can just kind of haul that little guy out. We're going out. to. I'm going to take this middle part out, but we're going to still use actually some of this tomato too. I'm going to let you cook back in. So you're just making this a little side here, but if you want to make this more of a meal, okay. I mean, they say you're trying to eat light, you can put some sausage in there. That would be good. How about some lamb? Or lamb, or lamb sausage. Yummy. You want to go all out. And you could even put some basil and things like that, but I really like your recipe that you're doing here. But don't think that any particular recipe, you have to stop at what that recipe says. All right. Use your imagination, take it a step further, two steps further. And I've kind of pulled this out. And we cleaned him out, and I'm gonna tip him over for a little bit, just to let some of the juice get out while we cook it. Cooking together is fun stuff. We have always had just a blast. What's the next good. step? We're gonna throw some spinach in. In, and that okay. takes a little bit. Go ahead and we'll let that wilt with your onions. All right. And you know how spinach cooks down to nothing. And I'm just going to cut these up a little bit, our innards to our tomato while you're cooking that. So let's go ahead. Can I add you some tomatoes? It's like you're getting your stuff's getting wilted down. You can do whatever you want. This is your dish. Tomato back in there. And I also have made some rice. And this was a, okay. you can do regular rice. I did a quick minute rice. And so I have, that's already cooked. Yeah, I got about a cup. And I don't think we need all of it. It's going to put you a little bit because we're just doing two tomatoes. Probably about half of that. Get a little starch in your that's right. meal there. And ricotta cheese. I'm going to do a little salt and pepper while you're cooking. And that's pretty much it. Once that kind of cooks down a little bit. Okay, that's your, cheese, your stuffing. That is our stuffing for our tomatoes. Ooh, that looks good. That go good? There's our appetizer. Look at our two cute little tomatoes. So you want me to fill them up for I you? I want you to fill them up. I really like what you're doing here. Now, we've done these in the oven, but tonight we're going on the big green egg. I've got it up to about 400 degrees right now. I'm going to back it off to about 350. And how long are these going to cook for? Let's give them, let's watch them 15, 20 minutes. But on the big green egg, we'll have to, I'd say, let's watch and just see what we think. Maybe to a half hour. That looks good. I think you're good. I don't want to get it too piled right. too high. A little bit of breadcrumbs. Okay. These are Italian. Wow. 
kind of giving it a That's sense. a beautiful, beautiful thing you and got nice, there. And then if you want to throw some Parmesan, I'm kind of dirty. All right. On top of that, and that is it. We're going to throw that on the egg. What now, do you think? In all seriousness, that's almost a meal in itself. If yeah, you're trying to eat light, look at that. How's it look? Oh, looks good already, doesn't it? All right, let's all right. take it that way. and start my spaghetti sauce, which I said I'd never show anybody. This is just something I've been working on over 30 years. I've tried everything. This is what we've settled on. I have never fixed this for anybody them not like it. You know who really likes it in Danville? Who? Sandy Stadium. Oh, I know. She loves it. She says it's the best in the world. All right, I'm going to get me some olive oil going here, of course, and I'm going to put enough in the bottom of that so we can start our shallots, onions, and garlic. But oh my goodness, the combination of flavors, fresh, everything fresh. We have picked some fresh basil, some fresh oregano, and some rosemary. But first, your jars are done. Let's set those out because we're going to need that burner. Now again, it's very important to remember, once you get your jars out, mark the top like we have those other ones over there, whatever year it may be. My burner's going, your burner's going. Now, we like sweet Italian sausage in our spaghetti. That sweet Italian taste already started. Now we're going to also use sugar in our sauce to cut the acid a bit. That helps. Go ahead and put my shallots and onions in here. All right, you can also put some ground beef, lamb, venison, whatever meat floats your boat. Of course, spaghetti's gonna be the main course. The stuffed tomato's gonna be the appetizer. And the uh, pizza's gonna be dessert. <laughs> mm, we have a rough life. Remember to check out our Facebook page and like it, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Also check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for shows that you might have missed, recipes, all kinds of fun stuff. And also, we like good music all around us all the time. And there's nothing like having a couple morons over, setting them up on the front porch and winding them up and letting them go. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. Sitting round a pot belly stove, talking about the farm and talking about the war and talking about things we really love. A one thing we really love is a big bologna sandwich, pick the good old boy southern kind of way. I know it sounds funny, one for bologna, we wouldn't be here today. Now give me an onion and tomato, cheese, lettuce, mayo, a thick slice of bologna between my bread. Stomach is a weight, tongue to salivate, need it slow, don't let it go to your head. Your inside will be tickled, you can even have it pickled. Bologna salad sure is fine. I want a big bologna sandwich at an old country store. Lord have mercy, that's the way. Fling a craving on me, brother. Summer sauce and jerky, pickle loaf, Dixie loaf and ham. Liverwurst is gummy, we ain't much on salami, but we are a little partial to spam. We've tried them all, brother, one time or another, always go back to the same thing. When it comes to cold cuts, they're all good, but bologna is still the king. Now give me an onion and tomato, cheese, lettuce, mayo, thick slice of bologna between my bread. Stomach is a weak tongue to salivate. Need to slow and let it go to your head. Your ends out will be tickled. You can even have it pickled. Bologna salad show sure is fine. I want a big bologna sandwich at an old country store. Lord have mercy, that's the way I want. Let me try this harp here, brother.
fried bologna in the morning, the biscuits and gravy, it sure makes life worthwhile. When them garden fresh tomatoes get a ripe on the vine, makes me and my bologna smile. One time my wife took a bologna casserole to church, after that she was the talk of the town. All the women was fighting over her recipe, made the preacher's socks go up and down. Now give me an onion and tomato, cheese, lettuce, mayo, thick slice of bologna with my bread. Stomach is a waiting, tongue to salivate, need your soul, let it go to your head. Your inside will be tickled, you can even have it pickled, bologna salad show is fine. I'm on a big bologna sandwich at an old country store, Lord have mercy, that's the way I want mine. Big bologna sandwich at an old country store, Lord have mercy, that's the way I want mine. That's no bologna. You're full of bologna. All right, let's, let's, I'm going to turn the heat down on that. You turn the heat down on that. Let's go grab our appetizers because I'm starving. All right. I'm going to push my onion and my shallot aside. I'm gonna come back with my garlic. I do not want my garlic to burn. We'll get a kind of a bitter taste if you let it go too long. When I get to that point, I'm gonna take some red wine and I'm gonna let that reduce down. It'll reduce really quickly. Bring your basil pesto fresh or out of a jar. That smell right there is fantastic. All right, now immediately tomatoes go in. These are so fresh. These are from the other day. These are just from the other day. Just out of the garden. The smells here, by the way, are fantastic. Now you can use, I use four pint jars, the flavor that I really enjoy, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some dried in just to add to it. Let it really infuse there is more oregano. I love, love, love the smell and taste of oregano when I'm doing pizza or spaghetti, and lots of it. You can't use too much. I'm gonna come back. Oh, a cup of sauce, six ounces of paste. Now we're getting there. Now you can come back with as much spices as you want. I really like the flavor just to just bounce out of there. As we let it cook down, I'll put a little more red wine in it. In this case, it's a Christian Mill Norton. And we're getting close to the point where we put the meat in. Now, our garlic, our onions, and our shallots were already stirred down, nicely cooked. Our tomatoes are, I don't want this to get terribly done. We don't have to cook this all day. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar in here to cut the acid. All right, now let's let that cook just a little while. Let's go ahead and add the meat to it. We're gonna put all the meat in there because I like a lot of meat. Now let's let that cook down. While we're doing that, I cannot look at these any longer. I have to take a bite. Has it cooled down enough? It's still a little hot. That egg gave it a good smoky taste. Mm. You got that hickory on there that smoke rolls around and it gives it always an interesting additional taste. That's absolutely fabulous right there. Mm. That's good. Mmm. I'll tell you what let's do. While we're at a resting point, let's clean this area up. We're gonna come back and get some water going. We're gonna have some spaghetti here. Right. Man, it smells like Italian heaven out here. How big do you want your pizza crust? It's up to you. That looks perfect. That's nice. I have got my egg up to almost 600 degrees. And in a minute, everything's going to come together perfectly. How long does this pizza take? Almost no time. A little trick. We're going to put some cornmeal under here so this will slide off quickly. All underneath it. That way when we get under here with a big spatula, we can pull this thing out. Now, we also put that on our pizza stone on a big green egg. Everything's coming together nicely. Our temperature is rising on the egg. I'm gonna get that up to about six, 700 degrees. The great thing about this, if you want pizza and you want it fresh, it doesn't take long. No, it doesn't. It's like about three minutes tops. All right, now this is entirely up to you how you wanna do this. Now we have our fresh stuff that we just picked up. We're gonna do just a little, little bit of olive oil in there. What do you want on first, Nikki? Cheese. Cheese first? I like cheese, yeah, and I like to see my items on top. It's mm -hmm. up to you. I like the cheese and then gonna We're gonna have to compromise here a little bit. Okay, do half and half. Do half and half. All right. Do some cheese. Tell me when. Yeah, it looks Still. good. Yep, that looks good. All right. Tomatoes out of the garden. 
And this is your pizza. So you can do it exactly like you like it. All right, now we're coming back with the little dried Italian seasonings. Got a lot of oregano in there. I like my oregano, because I like all those flavors. Come back with some pepperoni. And you can buy your pepperoni fresh if you look around. That's good. Everybody has different ideas about cheese. You can't get too much cheese. Do you mind if I put some on top? Nope, don't mind. Can you mind if I put some more? Yes, I mind. No, I don't mind. Talk about fresh. All right, let's get the spatula. Helps to have a nice big spatula. Nice evening, a nice meal. You need a nice Kentucky cocktail. Deanna's back. Hi. You know what? Over the years, we've tried a lot of different things, and the last time you were here, we had a, uh, what'd you call it? The moon? The I like moon bomb. Wow, you're gonna, have a hard time. you're gonna have a hard time beating that one. That was delicious. Tell us what's next. We are gonna make a Kentucky wine spritzer, too, as a matter of fact. You know what? Some people like red, some people like white. We're not discriminatory here. <laughs> and you know what? This is, this is what I like about this. It's quick and easy. Very. Got a wonderful taste. Let's see how you do it. Totally Kentucky proud, which we Absolutely. all like. Um, we're gonna take just some ice cubes. So we're gonna start with just a white wine. And you talk about Kentucky Proud, Kentucky Grapes, Christmas Real Wine is what we're gonna use here. Fantastic. And a good rule of thumb is two parts of wine to one part L8. I can remember that. Sure. And again, you know, I, I love to eyeball. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna eyeball it. Just a simple wine spritzer, just summertime. Some, something if you don't want anything quite as heavy mm -hmm. a little earlier you in the day. You just mow the yard, you're, mm -hmm. you're kicking back. And you're good to go. I thought you were going to put some raspberries I in it. I am going to put some raspberries in it. Thank you. I That's forgot. That's the one yes. They're sitting there staring at me. I got they are, and they make it so beautiful. Very nice, very light. Thank summer -ish. you. Summerish. Now, for those who would prefer a red wine, we can do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing. And for me, I personally like my white wines chilled a little bit. Mm -hmm. Red, I don't. Right. So I am just going to do the same thing. Of course, you could have your LA one already chilled when you put it in here. And I would recommend that. Mm -hmm. And with this one, don't forget this time we're going to put a little squeeze of lemon in it just to freshen it up a little and go around the rim. Look at that. How pretty. Yeah. Kentucky wine mm -hmm. with Kentucky grapes. That's right. Kind of looks like a pear, doesn't it? And LA one. You've made our summer so much better. Thank you so much. Cheers. Oh, done yourself. It's an Italian feast. Yes, we've already is. had our tomatoes, stuffed tomato. Look what we've got for next time. We need an Italian feast. This has been a, a nice tomato y sort of night. Yes, it has. And we're ending up here on a romantic evening. Aww. You know what? I'm going to let you do the honors there. I could actually eat that whole thing, but I know you could. I wouldn't be like that. Oh my. I don't even know where to start. Which piece you want? That one looks good. I like you a lot like of crust. One? Yeah. yeah. You're going to have a lot of crust right there. I'm telling you what, crust comes out fine every time you look on the bottom. Perfect. Mmm, that's delicious. Mm. You know what? If you do things fresh, there's, oh my goodness, flavors just jump out and smack the right side of the head. I like that. Mm. With your olive mm. oil and fresh mm. tomatoes. Mm. Try the spaghetti sauce. I'm telling you, go fresh, go local, pay attention to your local farmer's markets. Places where they sell food that you know is fresh. That's delicious. Now we got a lot of great shows coming up. You have responded and talked with us so nicely and asked us for certain things. We still haven't gone to Hillbilly Tea. We're going. We're also going to Stanford to visit some folks down there, have a nice meal. Lots of great stuff coming up. Be watching. And then really, after that, it's just all about good times. Good friends. And good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm. 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 To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, and Tim Farmer Productions. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions, harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Weisenberger Mill,